Gail. And I'm Susie. In this activity, we'll explore the secret ingredient in flour that gives baked products their structure. To begin to reveal the secret ingredient, you need to know about the proteins in flour. One protein in flour is called gliadin, represented here in purple, and glutenin, represented in blue. When water or other liquid is added to the flour and the mixture is stirred or kneaded, the two proteins combine to make a new protein called gluten. Gluten provides the structure to bake goods. Gail, let's take a closer look at gluten development. All right, let's do that. To get started, Gail, mix some water with the flour. As the flour is stirred, gluten begins to develop. At first, the gluten strands, as Gail is showing you, oppose one another. But the more the dough is mixed, the more bonds are broken among these proteins and new bonds begin to form. And soon the strands of gluten align with one another, increasing the strength of the dough, creating elasticity or stretchiness. As you are mixing, you can actually see and feel the dough become more elastic and stretchy. It's really important, Gail, at this point not to add too much flour, just enough to form a dough. It should have just a little stickiness. Once the dough is formed, it should be turned out onto a flour board and kneaded. To knead it, take the dough and press it, fold it over on itself, turn it, and keep repeating this process. Spread the flour underneath the dough and press, fold, turn. Press, fold, turn, and just keep kneading it until it's smooth and silky. Hey Suze, is this kneaded enough? It's been about five minutes and my hands are tired. Well, let's take a closer look. See how it's not really smooth yet? Pull a little on it. It needs to be kneaded more so that it looks smooth and satiny, which indicates the strands of gluten are lining up with one another. Oh, okay. For the rest of the kneading process, try to add as little of flour as possible. Okay. It's been another few minutes now. I bet it's ready. It is much smoother and more satiny looking, and even when it's stretched, you can tell that the gluten strands have aligned. So now we're going to wash out the starch, revealing the secret ingredient. The next step is fun. We're going to isolate just the gluten protein and wash away the starch contained in the flour. So squeeze the dough in the water like this to wash the starch out of it. When the water gets cloudy like this, the learners will pour out the water and add new, fresh, cool water. Then keep squeezing, pouring out and squeezing until the water becomes clear. This is washing out the starch. So now the water is pretty clear. This is a good stopping point. It indicates that the starch has been washed away and the gluten remains. The amount of gluten will depend on the type of flour the learners used. So some learners will have smaller amounts than others. And it may be kind of crumbly. That's okay too. Some of the gluten will fall apart more than others. Notice the strands of gluten are all aligned this way. And if you turn the dough the other direction, they're aligned the other way. And there's lots of little holes. If this were in a product that was going to be baked, like bread, those little holes would fill with air and leavening agents and stretch the gluten strands. So as air and leavening agents expand during baking, the gluten is elastic and allows the product to rise. But what are leavening agents? That's a great question, and we're gonna learn more about them in activity 1.2. Leavening agents make bread and other batters and doughs like cake and cookies rise.